Oh, he hello. <clears throat> hello. Are you enjoying uh, your therapy chair of the future? <laughs> oh, yeah. My my Thera chair 3000. It puts me into the perfect position to receive therapy. It, it anticipates your emotional pain. Yeah. And and kind of like jostles you around. Mm -hmm. And then I see I see I see you're getting a lot of function out of the grub hand, uh, mm -hmm. which is just kind of just slapping you whenever you get too emotional. <laughs> the anti hysteria grub hand. Yeah, yeah. I whenever I get a little bit too close to kind of overstepping boundaries here in the uh, here in the therapy office, uh, I get a little <laughs> ow. Oh God. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Jesus. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I... the, the, the biomechanical future that we're living in here in distant 2024 <laughs> is really impressive. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, you know, here it's it's been two years since 2022. I don't know why that's relevant. I don't know why I'm bringing that up. Uh, so much has changed. So yeah. The world is so different. <laughs> um, Cigarettes don't have nicotine in them anymore. Uh, uh, pain is now called uh plain for some reason doc let me tell you i'm in a lot of plane right now oh I'm a, okay i'm in some plane train and automobile at this okay. moment hot hot take on it that that has also been a thing i noticed that's changed in the last two years is that instead of seeing expand upon it we say hot take upon it oh, oh yes let me let me hot take upon my experience here uh well, I, what I really came here to kind of talk about is, uh, well, I, I guess I, I don't know, I, I should be a little hush hush about this, but what, what do you know about crimes? Oh well, I know that uh, here in the future, when we're when we're doing them, mm -hmm. um, they've gotten a lot stranger. Yeah. You know, ever ever since you know they realized that they could just, you know, make make uh normal crimes illegal you know people are just starting to do like crazier and crazier crimes okay L listen i'm sick of beating around the bush here i saw i saw a little movie called crimes of the future oh which one uh <laughs> it's funny that you ask uh well the first time i walked into the wrong theater and i saw a film oh. i saw a film about adrian tripod uh <laughs> Who's this, I guess just this guy who goes to the House of Skin? I don't know what that was all about. I've kind of, I figured out pretty quickly I was in the wrong theater and I, I, I went over to the right one and, uh, and I saw my boy that, Vigo. That AMC, that AMC got you again. With yeah, the, <laughs> that AMC so showing of 1970 Crimes of the Future. It was, it went crazy. The crowd was freaking out. Um, well, no, technically, I mean, technically speaking, I, I, I've seen both now, but, uh, yeah, I watched the 2022 David Cronenberg feature crimes of the future uh and let me tell you surgery is um surgery is sexy is that what he says in the in the movie um I, surgery uh sex yes please that's what he puts down on his id <laughs> <laughs> on his future id on his future id <laughs> Uh, yeah, did you get a chance to watch this this new fangled Crimes of the Future film? I did. I actually got to see it in theaters, even. Mmm. Um, because I wanted to see all the gross little men, uh, in, in full HD. Yes, the gross men. What did you, what did you think of it? I, I, hey, I think I really like this fucking movie. I, I, honestly, I loved it. Cronenberg is back, baby. <laughs> I, I actually followed it up by then watching Crash for the first time. Oh, yeah. Great compliment. Also great, like, just, like, threads that are attached between them, but also the ways he's changed and the way he approaches, like, sex in, in films. Because, like, Crash, kind of the whole thing is that it's, like, the lens of sexiness on, like cold hard steel in a way that ends up making it feel alien and right. then crimes of the future is like just like the the raunchiest concept that like repo the genetic opera fujoshis could come up with oh yeah on the big screen <laughs> yeah well i mean 
So to, I guess, kind of loop, loop it back into his earlier work, because this is definitely like it's a film that's really referential toward his earlier work. Uh, and it's also, I mean, it's a film about being an artist and about creating art. There's this whole, you know, I mean, like, it's the obvious, like, spilling your guts metaphor. There's all these lines that Viggo Mortensen has about, like, I never know when I'm making something new. It just kind of grows inside me. Um, yeah. Which, you know, you can obviously take to be about, like, the artistic process uh, and, you know, expression uh, or whatever. Uh, I am regretfully... Uh, I haven't seen that many Cronenberg movies. I've seen Crash. Crash is fucking amazing. Um, Videodrome is amazing. Uh, but, for example, I haven't seen... Um... Oh, God, what was the fucking one? Uh, well, uh, I haven't I haven't seen Existence, which I really, really wanted to see. Uh, uh, the Brood. The Brood. Scanners I uh, haven't seen somehow. I always forget that he did Scanners. Uh, Dead Ringers. Dead Ringers, yeah, that was the one I was trying to remember. The weird uh, twin, twins and the lady with two pussies movie. <laughs> oh God, I didn't know about that. I gotta see this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, God, I'm stupid. I'm just stupid. I'm stupid for not having watched more of his stuff. Um, because I feel like I'm going. I feel like I am going to be obsessed with it. Uh, but to kind of talk a little bit about uh the 1970 crimes of the future, because I actually think that there is a whole lot of overlap. Uh, and anybody who uh, suffered with me through through that film can attest to that as well, I'm sure. I don't think it's that bad, but it, it's definitely like a student film made during a time when uh, having a microphone and a camera on set at the same time would have been expensive for a student film. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, it's it suffers a lot of limitations. There's a lot of limitations. Uh but notably, there's a there's a side character in 1970 Crimes of the Future who he, he kind of has the same deal as Viggo Mortensen's character, where he creates new organs inside of his body that are like extraneous and don't seem to have obvious purposes. Um, there's a quote, something along the lines of his body, he insists, is a galaxy and these creatures are solar systems, which uh, is mirrored in the 2022 film where uh, basically the kid that the plot sort of revolves around uh, they say like what are you gonna find inside of him outer space blah 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 blah. Uh, oh yeah 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 that stuff's really that stuff's definitely very interesting to me um and uh a thing a thing that i kind of um noticed is that i mean like crimes of the future 1970 has a lot of really weird angles to it there's this premise that it's like an apocalyptic children and men future where uh adult women are getting infected by a disease that is kill it that has killed all of them off basically and there's all of these men who kind of like feminize themselves in different ways um there's this weird stuff with gender uh and there's like you know there's there's foot fetishism and a bunch of like dialogue about like oh these used to be like tentacles back in the day back in the good old days uh, so it's kind of like looking back into the distant past in an interesting way, whereas like the new crimes of the future has this whole microplastics angle, which is very forward facing. Basically, you know, what I'm, what this is a roundabout way of saying is, is uh, that the 1970 crimes of the future, I think, is as much as it's not directly related, I think it's a really good watching it is a really good way to kind of understand some of the points and some of the little thematic notes being touched on in the new uh in the new crimes yeah no i i, I can give that I, I guess i didn't i didn't get a chance to finish the first one but because it's fucking boring it's it is so very sleepy <laughs> it's sle <laughs> it's i mean like genuinely it kind of is a little asmr except for the really farty weird soundtrack um and just all sorts of like night weird 1970s 1970 contrivances um the other, uh, there's another kind of commonality between these films that I think we should loop around to later. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, for the time being, yeah, New Crimes of the Future, uh, a lot of just really good, like, world building stuff. I don't know. I, I thought that the, like, the most obvious thing to point out is, like, the visual design is really fucking awesome. Oh, um, yeah, no, it's, it's that classic cronenberg like geiger-esque approach to things yeah. i love i love all the weird biomechanical like home furniture that exists in this future 
uh, that essentially is like a home medical equipment industry that has arisen out of some mysterious set of medical circumstances that very suddenly overcame the population. Not that that's relevant to anything currently <laughs> going on in the world or anything. <laughs> Nah, I mean, it's, it's totally, it's it's nothing, it's whatever. I mean, I, what I will say is that, as, like, I love the production design. It is a bit silly that <laughs> we have, like, basically three examples. Uh, one of them is, like, a weird bed, which, like, okay. Another is, like, an autopsy table that's retrofitted for uh, artistic performances, which I thought was really fucking cool. Uh, yeah. My favorite one, though, is, like, the breakfast helper, uh, <laughs> which just kind of... <laughs> moves you around still and like, and like occasionally like just like taps at your neck <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and and purrs when you're eating good <laughs> yeah when you're doing when you do such a good job of eating that it it, it gets happy with you uh, and everybody is like using these to like augment and like make their uh eating habits as healthy as possible Really, really funny. I mean, like, it works. I'm not saying it doesn't work. This isn't a cinema sense moment. Uh, but, like, I, I I, don't know. I like it. It's funny. It's goofy. I like it. I like things I, that are I, funny. <laughs> funny. I, I love it because it is a David Cronenberg take on, like, just the general dystopia plot thing of, like, even in the future, whatever new technology we'll, we have will still be just as frustrating and opaque as technology we have now. <laughs> And we'll just as much be like, what the hell does this thing even do? Yeah. <laughs> why, why doesn't it work? How does it even work? But it's just so naturalized to the characters that, like, they don't even question, like, why does the chair shake me around when I'm eating food? <laughs> it's a question that doesn't need an answer. You know the answer. It's, it's, it's healthy. It's healthy to get jostled around like you're on a dark ride. Which, uh, to, to jump a little bit, not off the track, but jump to a little bit of a, a thing I love about the film with with that that it does is that it has this obvious entire world of things going on, and it's not about that. Mm. Like it is, but it's like you don't need to know how the bed works. You don't need to know like what's going on or why all this happened. You just need to know that like here's how these people are living in this new world. And so there's not really a lot of like, we're going to explain what these things are for the people at home who don't know. It's just it's like, no, we're only going to explain things that like the characters in the film would need explained to them. Yeah. Um, and that was the thing I picked up because right at the start of the film, the first thing we see is this like tanker that's been spilled and like very clearly has some sort of pseudo historic ominous like relevance. And then it just pans over to a kid on the beach and it's like the movie isn't about that stuff it's about this kid yeah <laughs> it's about the people living in the background in the foreground of this stuff none of the background stuff matters don't worry about it put it out of your mind yeah absolutely well i think there was um there was some sort of thing where like david cronenberg has, has been quoted as saying like oh you're you're gonna get what this movie is within the 10 within the first 10 minutes and you can just fucking leave after that which is very <laughs> funny of him <laughs> it's a very funny thing to say um but that shot i mean that shot tells you everything it's like this this child sitting in front of a oil tanker basically inheriting this world that is so full of like man-made things that aren't really you know like are deteriorating and becoming a part of the natural environment that we rely on. Uh, and this kid is looking for plastic to eat on the beach. Uh, and, you know, it's it's really... It's a really poignant image, and it's a really... It's, it's just a really strong way to kind of, like, say what the movie's about before the movie tells you what it's about. Yeah, no, it's it, it really immediately drew me in to be like, okay, what's this film? What's this film going to show me? <laughs> And within the first five minutes, oh, it shows you some stuff. <laughs> That's, I mean, a really rough, like, beginning of, of, of any movie. Uh, but, like, I mean, it, it works, but I was really just sitting there like, holy shit, man. <laughs> it's, it was great watching it in a theater and just hearing audiences, like, already be like, oh, man. It just It's just like a, like, all right, do you, like... 
I'm getting this out of the way now. So like either you're going to watch this movie or you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you're either strapped in or you're, you know, there's the emergency exits. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was watching this in uh, totally in an AMC with uh, some some older folks behind me who who had had some fun little uh, some some fun appraisals of the film. I would say there's a lot of bureaucracy uh, and a lot of just kind of overarching structures that the movie kind of hints at between um, not only the two sort of the you know the two bureaucrat characters but also like the fucking like the the cops and everything yeah know, was... the, the the guy who's a part of vice squad which has the great line where he's like well we call it he's like here he's like what does that have to do with vices and he's like well if we call it vices it sounds sexier which again <laughs> huh you, using sexually loaded language and imagery <laughs> in order to get your crime laws passed mm. huh. <laughs> huh well well, I can't figure out why that would be relevant to, to right now. <laughs> can't think of it. Not not coming up with anything. Um, yeah, what did you think of what did you think of uh Kristen Stewart and uh let me find I am so glad to see Kristen Stewart just play a little freak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was a lot of fun here. She's oh, she's having so much fun and she sells the character so well and anytime either her or the other guy was on screen i was having a fucking blast because they're both just like little little perverts and i really like the way in which it's like yeah (laughs) even even the institutions that are supposed to be stodgy are still going to be filled with little perverts these are my gender fluid children timlin and whippet even even the people I, I jokingly said to uh, my partner when I saw this film, I was like, this is a movie about a world full of chasers uh, where it's like, yeah, even the bureaucrats who are ostensibly here to like very uh, neutrally and methodically categorize like these organs that he's producing, both are just bringing in their own baggage to actually doing their job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, her getting the iconic, like, surgery is the new sex line. Uh, Just so much about her kind of, like, nervousness. She seems to represent, Kristen Stewart's character, I should say, she seems to represent this sort of social nervousness around, like, new ideas that arise. Uh, I mean, like, really, if we're kind of peeling back the layers of um, metaphor, you know, arising around, like, sex... Uh, definitely around like gender and kind of presentation and all sorts of stuff, uh, which you know is I mean if we want to jump right into the deep end here, that's kind of what this movie is definitely talking about is n- nervousness around the changing the changing nature of humanity uh, and you know the the march forward of of biology. I, I, I like how some of it is just lore to explain things away where it's like pain went away and infections don't happen anymore. <laughs> so it's OK to, to give your ear. It's OK to give your husband a little intestinal blowy, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I just. Oh, my God. OK, hot, just sexy, yeah. a hot just film, a, a zipper on his stomach and her immediately being like, this is the same thing as uh, unzipping your pants to suck your dick to me. Yeah. Literally. And him being like, oh, don't spill. Don't let my yeah. guts spill out. Just, oh. This is a this is a fucking hot movie. <laughs> yeah. no, like I said, c- c- contrasting it with c- c- Crash, extremely just like, yeah, yeah. And I get it. She's like, she's like, yeah, I get I get the appeal of this stuff sexually. I'm going to exp- I'm going to share that. But it. Definitely very, very is about. The medical and the legal and the societal construction of the body. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how all of those things intersect in a way that doesn't really matter to the person's body that is being intersected into, Mm -hmm. because his relationship to his body is basically having to actually establish a relationship to his body and not just establish everyone else's relationship to his body. Yeah. Yeah, he's a really, really interesting character because that's such a like loaded aspect of his personhood because these things are seen as performance pieces, right? But yeah. 
it's insanely intimate. It's it's a public sex act, as like they literally say in the film. Uh, and it's his fucking organs. It's stuff that's coming from inside of his body. It's parts of him that are being sloughed off, uh, you know, and he has to kind of accept that he is a part of a conversation that is greater than the sum of him, you know, greater than the sum of his parts. Yeah. E- even down to the thing where it's like when they're doing the heart work, line where it's like he's tattooing one of the organs to be unveiled and you know he's like oh like what if we did like a fun little referential thing you know like a classic tattoo and she's just like oh well we can't because bureaucratic rules even though what they're doing is like a gray market technically possibly illegal act anyway yeah (laughs) you know even even in this small thing of his performance role he doesn't he he's under the conscriptions of everything else around him. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I mean, like, you know, pulling back even more layers, like David Cronenberg has said in, in, in interviews that it's like, as much as it's, uh, I mean, like it's about, it's alluding toward, it's kind of taking into consideration, uh, you know, the politicization, the politicization, bleh, and the policing of, uh, women's bodies and trans people's bodies, uh, which we've seen, you know, a specific fervor over in really, really, very alarmingly recent history. Uh, and I think that that is, I don't know, it's, it's, I think it's amazing on those fronts. I think it's like really well reasoned, um, for, you know, I'm not... I don't know how ready I am to dive right over right over into the ending because it's so fucking loaded and I want to there's a lot to unpack there. But uh, I I just think that everything kind of being everything being brought to the fore uh, just as far as like even cosmetic like elective modifications that like Leia Seydoux's character goes through. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Those are those are kind of treated in, in all of these different modifications are treated in kind of like different. Uh, and really complex ways that, you know, kind of point towards the self-determination aspect of the film. And I think that even also ties into the art aspect of it, too, as well. Because if you see this stuff as, like, you know, a lot of these things also being obviously about the creation of art, the creation of art is something where it's like you don't necessarily have control over it beyond doing it but it's also under all these conscriptions of like what you can and can't do with it, what other people want you to do with it. Yeah. What, how other people interpret it maybe outside of your control. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, The way everyone sort of re in the film reads their own kind of motivations into it. And then when he kind of doesn't really line up with them, kind of like conjole him into doing something closer to what they want. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's l- just a really smart film about like autonomy and self-determination, both in the body and in the body as a concept of like within like creativity or like expression. Yeah. Yeah. The idea of being a squishy, you know, meat sack human who is expected to kind of create works of art that kind of exist almost outside of time and just how fucking weird that is uh and and how many conversations you just all of a sudden throw yourself into not even knowing that you're a part of these conversations uh i loved i loved ear man <laughs> ear man was just a really good scene just him him looking at it and just being like oh this is kind of derivative this is i i was gonna say i love Viggo mortison just being like catty it's just like uh he's like he's like yeah like i get what they're doing but like <laughs> uh I, I i saw some people on letterboxd being like oh he's subtweeting his son which like i i think that would be funny if he was um I don't necessarily know whether he is, but that would be that would be fucking hilarious. That's I I you know what I didn't think of it, it was that way, and I don't think it really is, but I choose to interpret it as <laughs> yeah, because that's so much funnier. Just like a, a Hayao Goro Miyazaki relationship, yeah. uh, 
<laughs> your shit is mid, my son. Further toward your point, as far as just like people's, you know, perceptions around art, uh, and also just kind of something I found really, really, uh, you know, really important for the current moment. Because so much of what the movie's talking about politically um, relates to these discussions that are happening in real life that kind of cir- kind of circle around this idea of the rights of children. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna get a little tiptoey here. Oh yeah. But uh, a lot of a lot of the a lot of the discussions and a lot of the rights that are being kind of taken away from certain subsets of the population, ha- you know. It's basically a, like, think of the children kind of thing that's happening Mm -hmm. uh, en masse. So I am very, uh, I I feel like a very deep emotional reaction to a movie that uh, puts a child's corpse on screen to prove a point about how you people don't give a fuck about the children. You could... You could give, you could barely give less of a shit about these kids that you are claiming to protect because that's what this is. It's like, you know, people, every character in this fucking movie, the kid is dead. The kid has no say in what's going to be done with his body. The kid has no say in, you know, the enormous narrative that surrounds him. Uh, And it's just a bunch of adults snipping at each other over what it what his death means and what what his body means uh and it's you know consent is brought up explicitly as as like Leia Seydu characters is Leia Seydu's character is just like this kid's dead this kid can't consent to this you know this plan to kind yeah. of excavate his organs and do the autopsy or whatever uh and the dad is just like oh i don't care i'm his dad yeah he's like oh well i'm the parent so i give consent yeah um which i i do want to tie back to 1970 crimes of the future also like 1970 crimes of the future is also very impassioned about um or you know it makes a statement that is impassioned about uh the uh the mistreatment of children uh and and the way that children are kind of used to you know dishonest ends or whatever so that's uh an interesting like sort of thematic property to not only bring back but to hammer down really hard on uh in this film because man god fucking damn he did not hold back yeah no it's it's oh, the the politicization of an actual child's corpse <laughs> yeah to, that was actually murdered with no one really reacting as if the even in the end the father who I guess to some degree, arguably cares about the kid is still like, oh, the mother uh, is is using his body to send a message to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No concern about like the fact that somebody replaced his child's organs with something else. It's <laughs> like, oh, the mother is sending a message. She's mad at me. She's angry. And I mean... She is, in a sense, well, I mean, like, her motivations are just that, like, this child, you know, that grew inside of me that I created, I no longer saw, you know, I I, I no longer kind of related to because he began to represent, like, a a future of human biology that I just don't understand and I'm not ready for and and don't want to see come to pass, Um, which... I like not even re- not even reducing just to like the current like narrative around trans people, but just in general, like this fear of the future, you know that that comes through her character like that. Uh, it's it's really it's really really sad. The the like the really sort of sad child of divorce uh sort of narrative that occurs between her and his father uh like. That's, you know, that's the end all be all is that like it's it's part of this greater narrative that does not serve the person who is being narrated about at all, period. Yeah, no, her her reaction is like, oh, well, this must be something your father did. 
but but both parents have a, a reaction that is essentially just this must be something the other parent did to you to get back at me yeah yeah absolutely and i mean like it turns out that um you know during the autopsy basically the government ostensibly got Kristen stewart's character timlin to like replace the organs or to like change you know change his internal system or whatever to kind of show people that like hey it's actually not possible this future this idealist future that you're planning out uh it's a it's a total fraud wink wink um which kind of you know again i mean like the nazis burning books about trans health care you know blah 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 we've seen this before <laughs> like i i was actually like pretty pretty interested in it too because it's a thing where it's like they also mentioned that like the murder of the 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 father creates a martyr um and i sort of interpreted those two the assassin characters as working for like a third unseen like motivation mm. so not not working necessarily for the police but just like something yeah. else like not this because like the vice squad straight up says like well now they have a martyr like he, this is actually like worse for us that he's dead <laughs> yeah um which you know doesn't mean that government isn't involved but because of like the late act reveal of them and their presence in the film up to that point it felt very much like oh yeah and then there's going to be other outside political factions which are not necessarily invested in either side specifically, but have some other investment in this situation and in directing things a specific way where like they don't want it revealed yet that, you know, people can naturally develop these systems of organs, but also they want the organization, um, the, the plastic eating organization to have a martyr on their side. You know, they, they want to inflame that. And I, I kind of took that as honestly because of their connection to the corporation that this is some sort of like like larger corporate interest that's going on where it has a specific interest in kind of narrowing the discussion of the future. Yeah, yeah, I would say, you know, I, I kind of misspoke when I said government when really, like you pointed out, yeah, they kind of work for the corporation that kind of like manufactures this stuff. And yeah. there's a way to kind of interpret that as like, yeah, they don't want this idealist future because they want people to be reliant on the products. Um, or, you know, there's like an even more complex sort of like structure there where it's like, oh, they want to like scatter that knowledge. They want people to be more, they, you know, they want this group to be more disorganized uh i don't know there's i mean that aspect of it is is very very interesting uh i would almost i mean like <laughs> make a sequel david cronenberg historically I, a sequel maker <laughs> i i looked into it because i was like oh i wonder if there's something that we missed that was cut for the director's cut and he was like no there's no director's cut this is the yeah. film because people have the similar reaction of like, oh, there's clearly stuff that we're not shown. Mm -hmm. But it's like, he's like, no, there's stuff you're not shown because you're not supposed to be shown it. And I I definitely that was that was at least how I kind of took it was because like the film is very complex and all these things. And I think that was like kind of his way of injecting into like if you're going to try to take like one person's side or another in this, guess what? <laughs> there's third there's other parties to this who also have investments in doing certain things who you can't even possibly anticipate what their investment is because the only other character we see them kill um is the guy who gives vigo mortison the zipper and the motivation for that death is never really like given mm. like the assumption is that he has some sort of knowledge that they're trying to cover up maybe it's also related to like the kid yeah I mean, I think, uh, like, there's a subtle, and I'm not really sure if this is, you know, intended, a subtle sort of implication that, like, maybe they see the sort of emerging industry of, like, turning microplastics into food as a competitor, um, or, you know, or I would rather, I would rather to say that's, like, implied by the very, very ending of the film, where um, Saul, uh, Viggo Mortensen's character, kind of, like, finally... Finally takes a bite and 
and loves the microplastics. Loves the microplastics. Yum, yum, yum. More microplastics for me. He gets in the pod and he eats the bugs. (laughs) (laughs) Um... Which I thought was I, I thought was a really like poignant and beautiful ending, just as far as like kind of accepting the idealism of the future or or eking out some sort of way of like expressing and uh, you know relishing in that the the way that things are evolving and the way that things are changing. Uh, so that might be an aspect of it where like you know kind of kind of like I brought up earlier where there's there's, there's this like implication that people might be less reliant on these products that are created by this you know robotics corporation essentially oh yeah no absolutely they they want to keep things at a certain level of stasis but also you know are aware that some degree of like this radical group existing like maybe creates its own demands for them another another read i got on the film uh just to toss that in there before we move on oh yeah yeah uh is that you can also definitely yeah and it's a dense film a lot of good ideas read into it um sort of transness and intersexness Mm. because a sort of big theme of the film is vigo mortison's character again you know having to undergo this surgery because his body feels out of control and he doesn't you know he he had the relationship he has to his body is very familiar to people who've had to deal with dysphoria and the kind of way your relationship to that dysphoria changes over time <laughs> this very like you know i don't like it uh i just kind of do what i have to do to get by with it yeah um and oh, then yeah. the kid part of the reason why the kids um exposure for lack of a way to put it that you can naturally generate these organs that allow you to eat plastic uh is seen as a threat is because so much of the power struggle going on is in this idea that like well there's the people who are choosing to do that and then there's the organs that are developing unnaturally but there's no way those two could ever overlap and that would it's thus create a part like a expectation of like oh what if these can naturally happen then what's the difference between someone naturally creating that and someone choosing or surgically creating that Mm. uh and so you end up with the paradox in the film represented in both the child and Viggo mortison's character of surgically intervening to air quotes unnaturally medically create what is supposed to be natural but punishing people who medically and unnaturally create the same deviations Mm. if that makes sense like and how it relates to like the contradiction of like the way a lot of intersex bodies have been treated and like a lot of intersex like children are treated where it's like they're subjected to medical torture essentially in yeah. order to make their bodies natural because otherwise their body suggests that like what is taken is natural and normal and the given is actually like can deviate from that yeah that's interesting because it, it like i don't know this growing of extra organs that's seen as this kind of like extraneous thing it's um kind of heavily there's like a lot of bureaucratic red tape around it, uh, and there's this feeling that it's, I don't know, just generally like extraneous. It's like a performance of um, what do what do what do people call transness when when they're saying that it's some sort of thing exclusive to the future? It's like some frivolity or whatever, you know? Uh, um, not decadence. Yeah decadence extravagance yeah so and and, you know there's these ways that like vigo's character isn't really thinking about the naturalness of you know what is what's occurring with him he's thinking about it as it as it occurs within the construct of like his job and these sort of preconceived notions that are kind of jammed down his throat pretty early in the film by uh timlin and whippet as far as just like 
oh, you know, this shouldn't be happening. I mean, like, we used to have, when I was a kid, we used to have pain, and pain was good because it taught you something. And now we don't got pain no more, and that's weird. I feel weird about that. Uh, when kind of the reality is that, like, uh, something, someone coming along and kind of proving the sort of naturalness of that, uh, you know, blowing the lid on, like, oh, this isn't extravagance. This is just an aspect of the human experience. Uh, that's really, really dangerous for, for a lot of folks. Yeah, because it, it would mean, oh, maybe this stuff shouldn't be uh, cataloged and <laughs> repressed and <laughs> controlled. Uh, filtered through and controlled. And then also, like I said, you have all the other character motivations where it's like Kristen Stewart is like, oh, he's doing it intentionally because it's art. Mm -hmm. Or the guy who's like, oh, it's really uh, cool and sexy that he's doing this. <laughs> <laughs> right. And and honestly, even like, um, oh, I'm blinking on the wife's name because we haven't talked to her character too much. Even that, like, you know, she's not a bad character, but even her, it's like, there's a level to which she's like, oh, but I want to be a part of this thing that your body is doing. Mm. <laughs> me, me too. This is both of our your body. <laughs> yeah. Which I like because even in the end, when she has him eat the candy bar, she goes and grabs the little ring camera to turn it into art, which has a sort of voyeuristic lens to it because we already associate that camera with her recording them doing surgery on her husband before they go like, hey, you can't actually do that. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah it's. It's interesting. I mean, like, it's it's a really kind of off-kilter relationship that uh, Caprice and Saul have with each other. Because um, she's, like, the closest that anyone gets to kind of understanding him. But, like, yeah, like you said, she's putting him in her narrative about, about what he is. Uh, and he's just become so accustomed and so okay with that, that it's... It, it, only seems to register sort of almost subconsciously to him. Uh, yeah. A really, really interesting portrayal of that kind of relationship. It's it's really good. And it's one of the things in the film that most like was like, I was like eyes wide about it. Like, oh, my God, like this is like such a because it's like it's not like it's portraying it like it's abusive or exploitative, but it's a portraying it as like she's making a lot of assumptions about him and his relationship to this stuff because they're her <laughs> assumptions and relationships. And it's like what it means for her when she's having a completely different, uh, his organ <laughs> relationship. to this. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, extremely funny joke though when she's like mm, oh, maybe i'll go to the party after and it just hard cuts to her at home head bruised with like freshly implanted things and he's just like why <laughs> <laughs> why did you go and do that damn what the fuck i mean it looks it looks sick it looks crazy but what the fuck yeah i mean like that's a whole other a whole other can of worms is sort of the um I, I don't know, that that subplot, I think, kind of... The, the cosmetic surgery subplot of just, like, oh, I'm sick of the girl who's like, oh, I'm sick of being prettier, I wanted to be uglier, or whatever, uh, and kind of going through this cosmetic surgery and kind of feeling that that's, you know, the same thing as what he's going through. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot, I don't know, there's a lot to unpack there. I, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about it. It's, it's, it's very interesting. This is definitely a film I'm excited to rewatch in like a year and be yeah. like, oh, I'm picking up on so many new things in this. Um, that chick, though, though, the the look she does with the like flayed open face. Yeah, honestly, honestly, she ate. She ate. That was honestly <laughs> she was serving cunt. She, oh, yeah, absolutely. Positively. Yeah, that was that was a that was an amazing look. Uh, yeah, lots of great, you know, makeup, costume, production design here. Uh, shout out to Carol Spear, a frequent collaborator, uh, with Cronenberg. She did the production design. I mean, you know, it takes a fucking village. Uh, there's great cinematography by Douglas Koch. 
Yeah, uh, no, I was gonna say this. This is a film where it's just you can tell all hands on deck are fucking masters of their crafts. Yeah, everything fucking the props, the sets, the costuming, the cinematography, the editing, all of it fucking goes. You could tell, like, you can certainly tell that this is a COVID era movie. Uh, just <laughs> I don't know, something about it felt off or weird in that regard uh i I mean like but it's it's such a smart film that it uses all of those things like to its advantage uh really well they it it uses it to make everything feel like you're in a back alley yeah yeah absolutely um they shot it i think in greece oh Uh, in athens yeah so and uh athens greece is you know greece is kind of going through it a little bit uh so i think that (laughs) That also helped a lot uh, as far as just the vibe of the film. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it it, it works. It, it works really, really well. And it's like a smart, uh, deceptively simple movie that's yeah. about a lot of things. One other thing, doing the kind of like typical uh, Wikipedia crawl that we do for the movies that we talk about. Um, yeah. He like wrote this script in like the 90s, pretty much apparently uh, that's so insane <laughs> it's fucking crazy uh basically like i was alive in the 90s you were alive in the 90s for you know for a little bit of it uh and i don't remember people talking about microplastics the way they were t- i mean like you know there was environmentalism talk back then for sure uh but man to be i don't know a, an interesting sort of prescience about about that particular discussion yeah no very very interesting like the things i mean i guess 90s would have been like one of the original coach culture war points for like lgbt and women's bodies yeah so and, like and environment makes, yeah in the environment but like i feel like in the, saying in the 90s in the future we're all going to be eating plastic uh not not ended up being much truer than he thought it would be and ended up sounding much better in a movie that came out now (laughs) (laughs) imagine if this came out in like 2005 or whatever though (laughs) oh my god i could see the like unrated like dvd box at target and it's just like (laughs) with over one minute of added gore (laughs) (laughs) jesus fucking christ and in this one, there's more stomach pussies. <laughs> the guy who goes, the, the ear guy actually is a pussy guy. And, and, and it's the underrated <laughs> cut. Jesus Christ. What's with this guy and his pussies? Always with the stomach pussies. Uh, I mean, I feel like I'm going to have that experience watching Existence because that's, you know, again. That is from that time period, yeah. <laughs> uh, somehow haven't seen it. Somehow it seems, you know, oddly prescient about a lot of shit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm excited. I'm really excited to watch it. I think this chair is actually broken. I, uh, it hasn't really been slapping me in the face quite as much. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's just fell asleep. Oh, oh, I gotta, you gotta kind of, ah, this new technology, you gotta like shake it awake, you know? Yeah. You know what? It might even be, the Bluetooth might even be disconnected. Oh, yeah. Let's, uh, yeah. Let me see if I can connect my phone. Oh, I can. Yeah. I can play YouTube through this. I can play like, yeah. No. In fact, it's recommended. In fact, you probably should have been playing YouTube through it for the whole time. It'd probably have worked a lot better. <laughs> oh yeah. I think the session would have gone better if I had like ASMR in my headphones. Anyway, so do you have Apple Pay for today's copay? Ah oh, shit. Uh, I haven't gotten the I haven't gotten the uh, the microchip yeah. implant yet. So we might. Well, uh, unfortunately, we don't do it that way. It will cost you an arm and a leg. Uh, uh, that's funny. <laughs> not, not literally though, right? <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs>